breaking news! In tonight's top story, is AI infiltrating the creation of VTuber models? The answer might shock you. Hey gang, Dozer here, and I wanted to make a quick video talking about one of the biggest new features added to Live 2D Cubism. It actually just released last week. That's quite a game changer. Now, I just started the free trial of Live 2D Cubism and literally just learned how to rig within the past 13 days. And lo and behold, a, a major update came for Live 2D. And one of the, the biggest additions is AI function for automatic generation of facial movements. Honestly, I am kind of curious. How good is the AI function for automatic gener generation of facial movements? And is this worth using? Is it easy to use? I'm here to do a little deep dive and see uh, just how it works and see its pros and cons and see if it's something that you can use. The website does a, a pretty decent job breaking down everything, but uh, let's do it ourselves. I'm gonna use my model, well not my whole model, but like my head. I have a, a sample uh, Photoshop file. First step is to drag it in. There you go, untitled model. Wait, no, create new model. But you look at that. I just threw it in. I'm going to tidy it up just a little bit. Hold on. Air front. So first thing I'm going to do is generate some meshes. Right now, as you can see, everything has been um, brought in with the base square mesh. And we need to change that. So if I go click here on the top, the auto mesh button, auto mesh, automatic mesh generator, for, especially for parts of the face or body that deforms a lot, I would say selecting the heavy one would be good. There you go. I'm gonna say right now, this improved accuracy of automatic mesh generation, I, you can tell it's, it's crazy how much better it is. So this is fine, I would say there. Same thing for my eyes. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and add meshes to everything. If you want to do it really quick, you can highlight a bunch of parts and just go whoop de doo boom. There you go. All right, everything has a mesh. So checking here, uh, just so you guys can see, everything has been separated into particular parts. So everything on the face, that includes the blush, my little face mole, um, the, the hairline that goes around. Um, the eyeball consists of the eye shine, the, the iris and the pupil. This eye pertains to everything around it, including the eye white. The brows have been separated into their own part folders. The mouth has been separated, including the, the mouth top and bottom, the teeth, the tongue, and the inside of the mouth and everything with the nose. So that includes the, the shine above it and the, sh the shadow or the shade underneath it. All right, I think we're set up now. So once all your parts are properly separated into their parts folders, so go over here on your parameter window, wherever that's at on your screen. We're gonna click on these three lines, the, uh, this option button, and we're gonna go down to auto generation of face motion and then generate face deformer. Now you can see right here, it auto-populated um, the parts that I named that match, but otherwise I'm gonna have to do everything else. Uh, I don't have human ears, so I imagine this AI is gonna only work for uh, actual human ear shapes. So we're gonna skip that, but I'm gonna do everything else. One thing to note about left and right in the program is that it pertains to the perspective of the VTuber model. For me, as an example, I, um, anything I, I, I titled left or right pertains to my perspective. So this is the left side of the face, this is the right side of the face from my perspective. In the program, however, it's flipped. It's from the, the model's perspective. So in this case, this will be the left side and this would be the right side according to the program. I'm gonna have to like flip the selection here. So IL goes to IR, IR goes to IL. There you go. Nothing for ear. Uh, 
mouth, nose. Okay, got it. Hit OK. It says here, deformer generated successfully. Please specify each deformer and click the generate motion button to continue. All right. So selection of target deformers. Uh, I, I believe we can just keep it as is. So I guess this, uh, so this moves to the second option. Um, this is what you would go to if you selected the second part. The first part creates the deformers for you. This part is where you generate the, uh, the angles. So I'm going to go ahead and click on angle X. Motion generate successfully. Continue to adjust the movement. Okay. So check this out. When you use this feature, it will automatically keyframe the items that need to be keyframed to um, angle X and Y. So I just clicked on angle X. So this is the one that I, I'm working on. Oh, you can see the, the default is pretty good. And here, let me hide. I'm going to hide a few stuff so that we can focus on the face. See right here, when I generated it, it's, it looks pretty good for uh, the initial option. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It's, it's really nice because it keeps everything nice and even for left and the right. Um, but let's go over the options real quick. So this one, you're going to have to kind of feel it out. But to, for, as an explanation, if you, um, let's say the, the movement level, um, I'm going to go ahead and move it down to zero. Notice how the face doesn't move as much from left to right. And if you go all the way up, it actually your, your pace, your face will pivot f much further. Notice how how much further uh, the the face line reaches. So I think I actually like uh, the face to have a wider range of motion because it just leads for a more active model when you start when you start using it. So I'm actually I'm gonna go down here and just move er, movement all the way like. Move them all up to 25. Notes. All right. So, eh, there's a little bit of jank. <laughs> but that's why there's different settings for it. Um, deform level. Uh, again, I just changed the face option to deform level 25. And you notice it's a little, it uh, uh, gives a, a bit more of a tubular effect, you know? Versus like if I put no deform level it's going to be a lot more flat. A few things that need to change for sure. I think the angle of the eyes uh, doesn't match the angle of the face. Like it, it looks like caved in right here whenever you look to the sides, which I want to adjust. So um, for the eye, I'm going to make it less deformed. Put it to five. Let's see. Notice the difference. And uh, no, that one's that one's kind of weird. I'm gonna I'm gonna change it. Nope. Right there. We go a little higher. What I like to do is go to the extremes and then slowly go towards the middle to until it's to your liking. You know. You notice when I change the eye mo movement, uh, so here, uh, I would say match movement uh, level of the eyebrows to eyes makes a lot of sense because obviously they should move together. When you rotate your head, the as far as perspective goes, it should have the same amount of depth that changes. When I hand rigged my eyes and my eyebrows, I pretty much matched the movement. So it makes sense to click this button to keep it there. Oop, oop, there you go. All right, uh, let's try. Let me look at the nose. I think the nose is a little bit. It's moving a little too much. So one thing to point out about the nose is that it separates the motions going from uh, left or, and right. That's probably useful if, if there's some asymmetry in your in your models. So I imagine because my face is pretty symmetrical, I'm just going to match the settings on both. So right now, at the current movement being at 25, I'm, it looks like it's not too bad. It, this, basically, what that means is that this nose is sticking out pretty far. 
if I were to, it's like, so if I move, move this back, for example, down to 12, yeah, it won't pivot nearly as far. And a lot of anime style uh, VTuber models tend to have really, really small shallow noses. So that might work for you guys. Let's see how, how bad, how it looks when you set to zero. Yeah, see, <laughs> doesn't, it, uh, so I'm going to say, I, I like the nose to protrude a little further, adds a little depth to the model. So I'm going to put it maybe around 15, 15 right there. No, that's not enough. Uh, 20, let's try 20. I like it. That's good. So deformation level. Um, this is, this will actually angle the nose for you. So if you have a nose that's just straight down the line, um, I guess that's a good tip. If you want to utilize this, just, uh, focus on making sure that when your model is drawn out, it is as symmetrical as possible. Let the rigging process uh, deform it so that it looks more natural. I'm over here on the left. I'm gonna move the deformation level to see how it looks. So that's too much right there at 25. But if you look at um, like level six, that's not bad. Look at, oh yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, let's go do the same thing for the other side. So 20, 20, six, six. I gotta say, uh, the AI generation of face motion is actually pretty solid. I, I would say, considering that I have hand rigged my model, the model that you see right here, um, this would be at least a great place to start off when rigging your face for the X motion. Eh, mouth is all right. I'm going to move on to the Y generation. So hit OK. I'm going to hit, uh, now that I'm back on this window, I'm going to, instead of hitting angle X, I'm going to hit angle Y. Motion generated successfully. Continue to adjust movement and deformation levels. So hit OK. Now we're working with this one right here, the angle Y. I guess it's the same principles. I kind of want, this one looks like the face is just squishing up. I want a high larger range so i'm going to actually just go ahead and move everything to movement level 25 mouth nose nose okay let's see how that looks holy shit. this is pretty solid check the deformation of the nose so i'm gonna go set it down to negative 30. if i change the nose motion of downward motion Let's see. Uh, I see what it's doing. Let's change the deformation going up. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not as impressed. It's it's okay. Also, if you notice, I'm gonna hit spacebar. Uh, <laughs> my mouth is peeking out here. Uh, I guess that's something that could be fixed later. Um, actually, wait, I can fix that now maybe. Maybe I don't want the mouth to go down that far. Um, I'm gonna actually move the mouth back a little bit. There you go. There you go. It's worth noting that, uh, again, from a perspective, whenever your, your mouth, when your face goes down, the mouth is uh, the mouth shouldn't go down as rapidly because it on your face it's more uh, oh, what's the word uh, your mouth recedes back <laughs> your nose is your nose is uh, protruding from your face so uh, as far as the Y motion the nose should move pretty rapidly whereas the mouth shouldn't as much depending on the axis range of your head going up and down. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if I uh, move up the eyes a little bit. So if deformation level 10 for eye and brows, if I go all the way up to 25, what does that do? It looks a little bit, it adds some curvature that I don't really like. Let me go down to zero. What does that look like? No, it doesn't look good. So I'm gonna put it back to 10. This is pretty good. If I saw a model like this, um, like on, on Twitter or something, I'd be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs>
the main benefit of this feature is that it's is highly symmetrical. <laughs> It makes the it makes the uh, movement very smooth, and if nothing else, especially for uh, you know if you want to buff up your rigging skills, it provides a really good starting point, which I think is uh, I would suggest is the proper use of this feature. So if I hit OK, last thing to do is to hit corners. Corners generate successfully. All right, so I hit OK. So check it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link angle X and angle Y. Look at that. Not bad, right? Uh, it does look like the, the eyes are shrooping <laughs> on when I go down uh, here. Uh, I, I, let me tell you, generating corners for the face is a bitch. <laughs> so there you go. That's the AI generation of face motion. If you so if you look right here, I'm going to click on this one, right? You can kind of if you click on the deformers of each of your face parts, you can see what's happening. Again, everything is smooth as heck. In all honesty, the the corner generation is just like how it is without using this feature. It looks kind of jank, so it might require some uh, adjustments yourself. So let's go to the face warp. I probably would move move this back a little bit all right um if you look at the way the motion works it, again there's a there's a swooping um motion for the eyes that's probably that's probably due to my settings i probably could have refined my settings a little bit more but at the same time that's also inherent with corner generation for um regular face rigging without the ai generation it's like for example this goes up here. I might actually go in, go to the eye left warp, and then probably move this a little bit, deform it just a little bit like to that. Let's go to, you have to use, make sure you use the def deformer. I don't know, can you see the difference? It looks, already looks a little better. Just basically taking the motion that Live 2D has given you and just fine tune it to your style. It's pretty neat. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed. I honestly am surprised it didn't already exist. <laughs> One thing I highly suggest before you use the face motion AI feature tool thing is to make sure you rig everything about your face that moves without your head tilting. So, so your eyebrows, your eyeballs, um, so that that includes like here. Let's let's take a look. So you definitely want to make sure you take care of like mouth form, mouth open, brow brow form, and brow Y. If you do eye smile, eye open, and eyeball X and Y, those are the items you want to make sure you rig first before you start tilting your face. At that point, though, you're probably going to create your own deformers. At which point, just keep in mind that uh, so we're using this feature. There's two options. There's the first option, which creates the deformers, and the other option, which is what applies the motion to them. So by rigging all those items ahead of time, you will most likely, or you should, have your own uh, deformer set up. In which case, when you generate the face motion, all you got to do is make sure you point those deformers to to these items right here, and then it applies the motion. That's another heads up that you might want to keep in mind is that because this feature um, distinguishes your eyebrow left and right and your eye left and right, what that means is you, you don't want to put your eyebrows in the same deformer because then you won't be able to separate them. So do that, just keep that in mind. Like for me, I'm particular, like for, for my, the way I deform my face, there's definitely no way that this auto generation would have been able to match the style that I was going for. But again, this would have take this would have been a great place to start. As someone that learned how to rig in the past uh, 12, 13 days, as you can see, my uh, uh, the top, I'm still in the trial period. I'm kind of bitter that this feature didn't come out like 13 days ago, so I could use it. But uh, I really hope you guys find it useful. Now that I'm at 
the end of the video, I did want to give a big shout out. I'm probably not going to make too many videos about rigging because everything that I could possibly talk about has already. Uh, we have these amazing artists that have gone over them in detail. I would rather point you guys to them. A particularly big shout out to Yoshino Arts. She has a huge playlist of really wonderful and detailed items. Also shout out to Cutie Dragon, Bug Bug, Kira Omori Live 2D, Chupuko, and Flux. Links down below. I don't know if you guys will, see, will ever see this, but uh, you guys have been tremendously helpful. And I hope to pass that on in this video, at least focusing on a new feature. If you have any questions, uh, please comment below and um, subscribe and, and like and all that, all that fun YouTube stuff. If you guys are interested in, in gaming and other content that I want, I plan to make in the future, please hit subscribe and, um, you know, I really appreciate you guys watching this. Let me know what you think. You guys have a good one. At that point, you probably should be setting up your own deformers. So... Uh... <laughs> ah, sh**. <laughs> uh, uh, let's, let's do that again. <laughs> You know, technically, this is the first content I'm creating with my VTuber model. Is this considered a debut? Wait, hold on. Am I doing it wrong?